Number 7. High Speed Impact 10-time world champion powerboat racer, speed record holder, and daredevil Fabio Buzzi lost his life along with two others. The high-powered speedboat they were competing in was launched through the air after hitting an artificial reef right by the finish line in Venice. The team had been attempting to beat their own world record again for the fastest offshore speed record between Billionaire's Playground Monte Carlo and the floating paradise of Venice, Italy. Just 300 feet through the finish line, the boat struck the breakwater just beneath the surface. Traveling at 70 knots, the hole was ripped clean open and the powerboat was tossed 100 feet in the air. 76-year-old pilot Butzi and two other crew members were all killed instantly. The fourth crew member, Mario Inveranizzi, miraculously survived after being tossed from the boat. The team was posthumously awarded the record, smashing their previous world record by nearly four hours. Number 6. Grounding The Suez Canal in Egypt was blocked for six days when the giant container ship Ever Given ran aground in March of 2021. Officially, the 1,300-foot-long ship, which is just shy of a quarter of a mile, was buffeted by 45-mile-per-hour strong winds, resulting in a loss of ability to steer the ship. Driving gusts of wind against the side of the loaded cargo ship caused the containers to act like a sail. By the time the sandstorm had settled, bow and stern of the Ever Given were wedged into either bank causing a complete blockage of the Suez Canal. Despite the crew's lucky escape with no injuries, things would get worse before they got better. The canal itself is responsible for about 12% of annual global trade, and over the subsequent days, some 350 other vessels were blocked from reaching their destinations. These delays halted just shy of 10 billion US dollars worth of trade for each day it was wedged in the narrow canal. Rescuing the ship was a long and slow process, which included removing fuel and ballast from the ship to lighten it, dredging the canal, a very memeable excavator, and many, many tugboats. On March 29th at 1505 local time, satellite images showed the vessel was finally free to move but not yet free to leave. Egyptian authorities seized the Ever Given and proceeded to hold it for over three months. Demanding compensation from the Japanese owners of the ship, at one point, they wanted over $600 million for the salvage operation and for loss of reputation. After reaching an undisclosed settlement, Egyptian authorities released the container ship on July 7th. Number 5. Oil Spills the largest accidental oil spill in history occurred in 2010 in the Gulf of Mexico. The Deepwater Horizon oil platform was a semi-submersible floating and mobile drilling rig, owned by Transocean and being leased for operational use by oil giant BP. It caught fire on April 20th. The oil well was located about 5,000 feet below the surface and extended nearly three and a half miles deep into the seabed. A sudden and uncontrolled surge of methane blew through the recently installed cement well cap, which had been put in place to seal the well for later use. The natural gas ignited as it traveled up the platform's riser, and at about 7.45 p.m. local time, a fiery explosion engulfed the platform, and 11 workers were never heard from again. Thick black smoke plumbed into the sky as the fire continued to burn being fueled by the natural gas as well as the crude oil that was now spewing out of the ruptured wellhead. The platform continued to burn uncontrollably for the next two days, before the structure gave out, capsizing and subsequently sinking into the ocean, all while still leaking over 60,000 barrels of oil per day from the damaged well into the Gulf of Mexico. Even though the platform had sunk two months earlier, it took 83 days for the petroleum leak to be temporarily stopped and a further three weeks for a permanent solution to be completed. By August 3rd, an estimated 4.9 million barrels or 205 million gallons of oil had been dumped into the water. 
BP was subsequently fined $65 billion. Number 4. Dredging Accidents One Vietnamese operator made a very lucky escape when the crane he was using buckled under the weight of the load that he had tried to pull from a river below. The crane was operating on a barge on the Ko Chien River south of Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam in April of 2020. Video footage captures the dramatic moment when the crane suddenly snaps from underneath the cab and topples into the murky waters below. The barge rocks as two of the workers can be seen fleeing as the entirety of the crane vanishes in seconds. Fortunately, the quick-thinking driver hopped out of the other side of the cab. No one was reported injured, but the three men were left very confused as to what to do next. Number 3. Human Error Perhaps not the most infamous sinking of a cruise liner ever, the Costa Concordia disaster of 2012 is the most cataphoric in living memory. The six-year-old cruise liner was built at a cost of $530 million and on the first leg of her route through the Mediterranean. The ship's captain, Francesco Scatino, then veered from the Concordia's safe and planned course to perform a salute to Tuscany, the maritime act of sounding one's horn as a warm greeting. Unfortunately, the language barrier between the Italian captain and the Indonesian helmsman meant the boat steered the wrong way, an error that was corrected in less than 15 seconds. However, it takes quite some time for a huge 100,000-ton vessel to maneuver. By 9.45 p.m., passengers and crew reported hearing a huge thud. A 175-foot hole was torn in the port side of the Concordia after it collided with rock outcroppings. Water immediately began to rush on board, and five compartments, including the engine room, were flooded. Concerns by both the passengers and the Italian Coast Guard were initially downplayed by Captain Scatino. The Concordia had lost power and after a further 10 minutes of confusion, panic started to set in amongst passengers and crew alike. The Italian Coast Guard called back over the radio and Scatino finally admitted they were taking on water. By 10.55 p.m., the captain gave the order to abandon ship. At 11.20 p.m., Scatino was seen leaving the bridge, and shortly after, he was spotted in a lifeboat, claiming that he had fallen in. By midnight, all cowardly crew members had abandoned the bridge, despite there still being 300 souls on board the sinking ship. Italian Coast Guard found Scatino and a lifeboat full of former Concordia officers and ordered them to return to the ship to oversee rescue efforts. They refused. When dawn broke, 4,194 people had been rescued from the now toppled ship. The rescue operation had enlisted 25 patrol boats, 14 merchant vessels, and numerous helicopters. 32 people perished on that night, with the last body not being recovered until November of 2014. Scatino was convicted on multiple charges, including manslaughter. He was sentenced to 16 years in prison. Number 2. Deep Sea Submersible The Johnson Sea Link Submersible was the second scientific research vessel designed by pioneer Edwin Albert Link out of Florida in the early 1970s. Designed and built with two separate compartments, this latest feat of engineering allowed for lockout diving meaning that the crew could enter and exit the subversive at depths of up to nearly 500 feet. In June of 1973, a crew of four, including Edwin Link's son, Clayton, set out on the sub's 130th dive for what appeared to be quite a routine mission. Tasked with a salvage recovery, the crew descended down to the USS Fred T. Berry off the coast of Key West, reaching a depth of over 360 feet with no concerns. Shortly after the salvage operation began, so did the rescue mission. The Sea Link had become stuck in the wreckage of the warship and was unable to free itself. The vessel and crew of four remained trapped at depth for over 24 hours, while support teams at the surface and the US Navy organized and unsuccessfully attempted multiple rescue operations. The original dive plan did not account for the crew leaving the vehicle 
So, when lockout dives were discussed, it was deemed too dangerous for the two men in the diver's compartment for fear of oxygen toxicity, not to mention the cold. As the vehicle had now been down at over 300 feet deep for such an extended period of time, the temperature inside had now matched that of the ocean, a bitterly cold 45 degrees Fahrenheit. By the time the US Navy had managed to free the sea link and it had surfaced, the two occupants in the dive compartment, including Clayton Link, had both died due to carbon dioxide poisoning. Succumbing to the natural but deadly gas after an air filter in their chamber was not working at full capacity. This, totaled with the length of time the sea link was unfortunately submerged, meant that once the men fell unconscious, they were never able to wake up again. Number 1. Natural Disaster the SS El Faro left from Jacksonville, Florida with the intention of carrying all 600 containers and 33 souls safely to San Juan, Puerto Rico. The 40-year-old floating rust bucket was piloted by American Captain Michael Davidson. Before the ship's departure, Davidson was made aware of the storm and plotted a course that would take the El Faro within 175 nautical miles of the inclement weather a distance later deemed to be more than safe by the Tote Maritime, the cargo ship's operator. Mother Nature would not be so kind, as during the voyage, meteorologists upgraded the weather from Tropical Storm to Category 3 Hurricane. Less than 30 hours after leaving her berth in Jacksonville, the SS El Faro met the full force of Hurricane Joaquin on October 1, 2015. By 7.30 a.m., the cargo ship had lost propulsion, was taking on water, and had a 15-degree list. Captain Davidson had sounded the ship's alarm, waking many of the crew to the announcement they were sinking. Everyone should leave the doomed vessel using the life rafts. The Coast Guard only received a single ping from the ship's emergency positioning radio beacon before all contact with her was lost. GPS data put the El Faro within the eyewall of Hurricane Joaquin. With winds in excess of 90 miles per hour and waves up to 30 feet high, it might not be surprising to learn that there were no survivors found. As the storm cleared the area, rescue operations mounted. The wreckage was found nearly a month later in an upright position and in one piece. It just happened to be about 15,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. Would you rather attempt to sail through hurricane conditions or survive wandering through the Mojave Desert? 